Hello everybody, welcome to my November wrap up. This will probably be a rather short video because I only have a few books to talk about, but the first one I actually finished on November 1st, so I read the majority of it in October, and that's A Touch of Light by Tiago Abdallah. And so this is book one in the Ashes of Avarin trilogy. It's a self-published book, a debut, and I have a spoiler-free review of this if you want to hear in-depth thoughts. And the funny thing about this book is that I read the majority of it in October, like I said, and I picked this up because at the time I was reading some dark books. I was reading books with darkness in the title anyway, like Sons of Darkness and The Darkness That Comes Before, and I was thinking, I could really use a touch of light after all this darkness. And the funny thing about that is that I feel like that touch of light, the metaphor of that in that book, maybe hints at some dark and ominous things that the light reveals. So just keep that in mind, but there are griffins in that book, in that world, so I had a ton of fun making the thumbnail for my review of that. After finishing A Touch of Light, I went into The Warrior Prophet. This is book two in the Prince of Nothing trilogy, and what a fascinating book, what a fascinating read. I was eager to get to this because it has been a goal of mine to try to finish this trilogy before the end of the year, and I had a wonderful discussion with Raph Blutaxt, with Philip Chase and Jimmy from the Fantasy Network that will be here on my channel either before or after posting this, I'm not sure, but it was a fantastic discussion. We went quite in depth about, um, about the approach to faith and zealotry and even battle scenes and a lot of details, especially critiques on sexuality and women and things like that that are happening in the story. But overall, I think that Baker did a phenomenal job with this story with the interesting magic, I love the magic in this book, and the character work. The character work was so good. It was so fleshed out. I felt like I could really vividly imagine these characters or understand these characters and at the same time have a lot of intrigue about them and wonder a ton about what was going on. And I also just appreciated Oh, the tragic elements in this story. I feel like there were some really tragic things that happened in that book. And it's definitely not a light read. Talking about A Touch of Light earlier again, this is definitely a, a pretty heavy read regarding the content, regarding how emotionally dark and harrowing and bleak it is at times. So just keep that in mind when you go into it. But I think that the Holy War execution was really something for me. So I'm still thinking about the book. I think that there was a lot to take in and absorb in it, and I appreciate that about Baker's writing, and I'm very much looking forward to reading on and finishing that trilogy this year. I didn't do a review of The Warrior Prophet. I just did that discussion, which is full of spoilers, but I think I'm going to try to attempt a spoiler-free review of the trilogy once I finish, and so stay tuned for that. And then after reading The Baker, I went into Augustus by John Williams, and I was super excited about this book. So I read Stoner by John Williams earlier this year, and I, well, I actually listened to it via audio. The audiobook is free if you have an Audible account, and I thought it was phenomenal. I've just been, I've been in love with that book. So when I did Why Read episode one with Alan from the Library of Alexandria, he shared with me in that discussion that John Williams wrote a book on the great emperor Augustus in an epistolary format and that he was going to be reading the book in November. So I asked if I could join in and of course the answer was yes, so I did. And initially I thought I was just going to do the audiobook because just like Stoner, the audiobook for Augustus is also free if you have an Audible account. But I found that the audiobook for me personally, and it could be just my headspace, I wasn't really in much of an audiobook mood um, for most of November anyway, so I tried to listen to parts of the audiobook, and then I would re-listen to make sure I understood what I was listening to, and then I just found myself rereading it visually anyway via ebook. So I mostly just visually read this book and didn't really listen to the audiobook, though I do know some people who have listened to the audiobook and appreciated that. I just found for me it just worked better to read it visually. And there, even though it's a rather short book, there was a lot to absorb. There are a ton of themes. There's just a ton to absorb. And the whole last section of this book is just 
quote, quotable passage after quotable passage. It's so well written. It is just incredible. And the epistolary format, in my opinion, was done to perfection. I think it was more than just a creative way of telling the story. It, he used it in a strategic way as well. So Alan did encourage me to do my own review of this book. He did a phenomenal review of this book. And of course, he has all the insights to history. But I think I'm going to try to do one. I just, you know, need to organize my thoughts a little bit more. So I'm not sure how soon that will come out if I do one. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I loved it, in fact. And I talked about it a little bit. I gushed about it a little bit in my Thanksgiving Day vlog, if you check that out. But another book that I also talked about in my Thanksgiving Day vlog was my reading experience, at least the beginning of my reading experience of The Vanished Birds. And this is by Jimenez. And this book is a space opera standalone, but it is not a hard sci-fi book. I would say it's a little more um, soft in some regards. I mean, it's definitely a space opera. There's a little bit of techno babble here and there, but it's really about the characters and themes that's at the heart of the story. The prose is, I would say, contemporary, but at the same time, I think that the contemporary prose still, like the storytelling itself, for me, almost felt poetic. I don't know how to explain it other than that. There was something beautiful about the way that this had so much heart to it. It had so much heart to it. And I love the way it ended. And I also love that music plays a role in this story too. And so Evie gifted me this book. She thought I would love it and she was not wrong. Um, Jimmy also picked this book up in November, loved it. And he actually also thought that I would love it as well. So I'd be curious to hear from them what exactly about it made them think of me because I'm just curious about that. But I did enjoy it. It is a standalone, has wonderful themes, wonderful character work. And I also, just like I was talking about with uh, with Augustus, how I appreciated the way that the story unfolded, I also loved the way that Jimenez unfolded the story in this book, especially because in the first chapter we're introduced to a character and you think this is going to be the main character in the story. And it turns out that's not the case, but it's done with purpose. And it's done in such a I don't know, a well thought out way. I feel like the way that he unfolded the story was so clever, so well thought out. And it's just a standalone that I thought was really well done. So I appreciated it. I enjoyed my time. And I think that wraps up the books I finished in the month of November. I did start the audiobook to Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher, which I'm really enjoying. It's just a lighthearted, quirky fairy tale and it's a lot of fun. So I'll probably be talking about that later on in the month of December. But uh, one other highlight I wanna mention in the month of November, I received a very generous gift from Jenny Wirtz, these beautiful hardback editions of the Wars of Light and Shadow series books. And it's not the entire series, of course, cause she's finishing off the last book and then there's trouble getting a hardback edition of one of the books, which she explained to me. But these ones are out of print, they're all signed, and they're beautiful, all with her cover art, of course. She's an incredible artist. So I'm so excited about that and very excited for the Wars of Light and Shadow read-along, which we will be doing at some point. We will be continuing and discussing book one at some point. So just stay tuned for that, of course. One last thing I want to mention is that my heart goes out to Alan for the horrible accident he was in and the other victims involved. And of course to Christina, who's there to support Alan and help him through his recovery. So I just wanted to mention that it's on my mind, it's weighing on my heart. And I'm also so grateful to see the community outpouring of love and support to Alan right now. I know Zara and Charmaine and Evie have done quite a bit, especially with the GoFundMe. And so I'll go ahead and link that below just in case they need any more shout outs for it. So anyway, I just really am grateful for this community and for everybody's outpouring of support for that. And that is it for now. I hope you had a wonderful November. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.